What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Ari. Welcome back to Air Mountain Vibes. Thank you for tuning tuning in. You know, I'm back with another reaction video. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Oh, damn, it's hot. Let me turn my fan. Hope it doesn't look my fan. I mean, breeze. But hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, I'm doing a reaction video on 10 people who got eaten by wild animals. I hope this ain't no dumb crap. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's certain things that could be avoided from you getting eaten. I'm, I'm hope I'm, I am hoping that these are not any of the animals that could you can be avoided. That can be avoided. Let's get into Civilization this. is amazing. Today, most people wouldn't worry about being eaten by an animal. After all, we don't live in the wild where we have to protect ourselves from big felines and dangerous cats. In fact, we don't even live so close to wild animals anymore. We have zoos for that now. Living in high-rise buildings and being surrounded by roads means that the threat of being dinner to an animal is far removed from our sensibilities. We don't think about it. However, that doesn't mean that the threat doesn't exist. Unfortunate as it may be, some people still fall prey to these age-old enemies of humanity. And sometimes, Master just stop sometimes, look at this dude. Win. Check one. Enemies of humanity. And sometimes, just oh some. Why would you put it intentionally? Put your arm. Oh, he he's not gonna bite. I'm like, well, look at him teeth. You come here, gonna bite. Not because he ain't biting hard down there, but what I wanted to do there is he said, "All right, bro, put it in my mouth. Put it in my mouth. You put your arm in there, man. Say, come here, arm clean off." Sometimes these animals win. Today, we'll be looking at 10 scary and sometimes devastatingly tragic stories of animals eating people. Number 10, wrestling a shark. Whoa. Wrestling a shark is certainly not your idea of a fun time, but that was exactly what Vance Flossenzer had to do when his nephew was attacked by a shark. I trust you do the same. Jesse Arbogast was eight years old in 2001 and had the fortune of playing with his family on Florida's Santa Rosa Island. Unfortunately, while playing in the shallow waters of the island with his cousin, Jesse was attacked by a bull shark. His parents were on the beach enjoying the sun when they heard Jesse's frenzied screams. It was at this moment that Jesse's uncle, Vance Flossenzer, sprung into action. He took to the water and immediately pulled the shark off of his nephew. It all happened so fast that it seemed like an action movie scene. Unfortunately, that's not the end to this incredible story. Vance was able to remove Jesse from the mouth of the shark but Jesse's arm came off and got lodged in the throat of the shark. Now here's where the story gets incredible. While Vance's wife took the children off to safety, he held on to the shark and wrestled it to the beach. He did it because other children were in the area and he was scared that the shark could hurt them. Oh, Thankfully, man. park rangers came and killed the shark for good. Jesse's arm was retrieved from its throat and was reattached. Unfortunately, Jesse suffered permanent brain damage from the attack. Number nine. Oh, I'll take a shout out. Hey, he's alive, but permanent brain damage. Does that mean he's still, uh, I'm not sure. Does that mean he's still alive if he has, brain, okay, brain damage? I know probably, not probably, I know he won't be the same, but is he still alive? You know, maybe like a Stephen Hawkins type? But hey, you got life. Shout out to that uncle. Attacked by a bear. Bear hugs from people you love are amazing. Bear hugs from bears are definitely not as much fun. 46 nope. year old hunting guide, Kutu Shaw was working at his job when he was attacked by a polar bear. The year was 2003. The location was Canada, and Shaw's life was in grave danger. The polar bear attacked Shaw's tent by opening a gigantic hole in the canvas. When he woke up, he decided to run away, but he tripped over a rock and fell. This made it easy for the bear to attack. Instead of killing Shaw right there, the bear dragged his prey by the toes to the edge of the ocean. What the bear did next is quite predictable. He sunk his class into the back of Shaw and proceeded to tear off his scalp like paper. Thankfully, the cook of the group shot the polar bear before further damage was done. Shaw was transported to the hospital where he underwent over 13 hours of surgery and received about 300 stitches to reattach his scalp. Ooh. Number eight, don't mess with a great white. Most people don't enjoy working during work breaks. Lisa Mundy, a wildlife tour, certainly didn't expect to encounter any wildlife when she was enjoying her lunch break in the sun. Unfortunately, a great white shark had other ideas. Lisa was wakeboarding when she missed her board and plunged into the water. A 13-foot-long shark attacked her vertically and clamped his mouth on her head. The shark tried to drag Lisa underwater, 
but she was able to let loose because of her life jacket. So you could say that the life jacket really lived up to its name. Lisa survived with grief. Y'all know what that woman just said? The shark attacked her vertically. So say the mom in the water, right? That shark jumped up out of the water and grip her. That's crazy. Her face and neck were cut into tatters, and it took a 16-hour surgery to get her arm reattached. Thankfully, Lisa regained all feeling in her arm today. She since recovered fully, and today works in a shark conservation center. Rather poetic, wouldn't you say? Number seven, double grizzly attack. In 2016, 50-year-old Todd Orr was out searching for elk when he walked into an open meadow. Here is where he met a bear and her cubs. Soon, Todd learned that there are only a few things more dangerous than a sow protecting her little ones. The bear charged at him, biting and beating him with a reckless abandon. She stopped the onslaught for a while and disappeared into the bushes. Todd thought it was over, but the worst was yet to come. She soon appeared again and began attacking even more ferociously than before. She managed to slash Todd across the head with claws. Thankfully, despite in great pain and suffering from several puncture wounds, Todd was able to walk 45 minutes back to his track. He was then able to drive himself to the hospital, where he got eight stitches for his troubles. Number six. Whoa, who the hell is nigga as T Grizzly? How the hell this dude survive a bear attack with only, and it was only eight stitches? Damn. The old man and the cougar. 62-year-old Edmund I like me some cougars. Wink, wink. Green wasn't particularly fond of human company. That's probably one of the reasons why he lived in a cabin 10 kilometers from the nearest human. One day, while chopping wood, he saw a cougar staring at him. Later that night, the cougar continued watching. Ed decided to turn off his lantern because he believed the light attracted the animal. Once the light went out, the animal attacked through the window and pounced. After a short wrestle, Ed was able to grab a knife and thrust it into the cougar's throat. He kept thrusting and twisting till the animal died. But this isn't the end of this remarkable story. Ed got out that night and rode a boat for two hours till he got to the nearest human being he could find. When he got to the door of the closest cabin, he collapsed and passed out. He was laying there dying for eight hours until he was found. It took surgeons a while to piece him back together, but he managed to survive the ordeal. Number That's five. That's what you call fighting for life. Surviving the hippo. When you think of hippopotami, you most Hippo's likely dangerous. don't think of aggressive animals who have the ability to be extraordinarily deadly. Yeah. Well, that's because they have good PR. But what happens when the hype proves not to be real? Paul Templar, a river guide, was working with a group of tourists when this hippo emerged from under the Zambezi River and attacked his group. Meanwhile, a tourist named Evans got thrown into the water by the hippos and Templar had to try to save him. He managed to grab hold of the tourist but before he knew it, he was in the mouth of the animal. The hippo crushed Templar, threw him up, and shook him like a rag doll. Finally, the hippo dragged Templar to the depths of the river to drown him. Fortunately, the animal got tired and Templar was spat out. By then he had gotten 40 puncture wounds and his arm was non-existent. Luckily for him, a team of surgeons were able to put him back together. Sadly, Evans died, and his body was found two days later. Oh, man. Number four. A python, a farmer, and a tree. Ben Niambe, a farmer from South Africa, was tending to his livestock when he suddenly felt his feet step on a spongy thing. Ooh. It turned out that the spongy thing was a python. I, and it yo, made any, any, but I hate snakes. I, I don't know why, but I feel like I just stepped on the snake, yo. Oh my gosh, I'm just thinking about it. Oh. It really entangled Ben. Its plan Sorry. was to strip Ben till it suffocated. In a twist of fate, Ben bit the snake and struggled with it till he was able to get his arm free. With the free arm, he reached for his phone to call for help. Oh, let's put that back. I'm gonna hit all right. And it immediately entangled Ben. Its plan was to constrict Ben till it suffocated. In a twist of fate, Ben bit the snake and struggled with it till he was able to get his arm free. With the free arm, he reached for his phone to call for help. While Ben was calling, the python was focused on other things like dragging his prey up a tree. <laughs> Incredibly, the snake was able to do just that. Help eventually arrived, and the snake and Ben dropped from the tree. Ben survived, but the snake managed to escape. 
Number three. Gosh. The grandmother and the bear. Oh. Sue Aiken stayed alone in the Kavik River camp in Alaska. One morning in 2007, she went to the river to get water when she was attacked by a grizzly bear at the riverbank. After rolling her onto her back, it proceeded to bite a good chunk of her head. Instantly, Aikens remained stiff and submissive. She knew that the key to escaping a grizzly bear attack was not to resist. When the bear finally relented, she found her way back to the camp. That was where she patched herself up. Her wounds were quite serious, and she had to sew sections of her scalp back on. But Aikens wasn't prepared to go silently into the dark night. She came back for the bear and made sure she killed it with a rifle. Now it's time for today's best pick. Our best picture for today was sent to us by a subscriber. So if you came across a picture online and want to know more details about it, what? just send it in to us. Who knows? Your picture might even feature in a future video. What? Number two, Jean Moe and the bear. Alaskan hunter Jean Moe was almost 70 when a brown bear attacked him. The bear attacked when Moe was busy skinning a deer, so he was caught by surprise. Ordinarily, Moe would have shot the bear with his rifle, However, the rifle was way too far away for him to grab. So what did Mo do? He did the one thing any thinking man would have done. He shoved a knife down the bear's throat as it clamped down on his arm. As the bear Whoa. continued to nibble on the hand of Mo, the fight went on. The animal attacked Mo several times, and soon a chunk of Mo's leg was missing. But that didn't take the fight out of the hunter. What? When the bear thought to charge for the last time and take out Mo finally, a knuckle crashed into his nose and broke his snout. Mo had done it, although his knuckles had broken in the process. Afterwards, Jean Mo was able to stagger over two miles to find his hunting party. He spent a long time in the hospital, but was eventually patched back together. I saved the best for last, but first, I have a quick challenge that takes only five seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next five seconds, you'll get ten years of amazing luck. Just try it. In the year 1922, there was a trapper working in Manitoba who went by the name of Ben Cotrain. One day, while working, he was approached by a pack of timber wolves. The closest human settlement was miles away, and Cotrain had only his mind, his heart, a rifle, and two bullets. He tried to scare the wolves away by firing his bullets, but they were determined not to leave. Cotrain then began his first act of an amazing but tragic story. He managed to kill four more wolves by using his rifle as a battering club. Unfortunately, the wolves eventually overpowered Cotrain and he paid the ultimate price. He went out in a blaze of glory after single-handedly killing 11 wolves. And yes, that's the end of this video. While I can't tell you to go on a grisly ride to experience any of these horrible cases firsthand, I can at least tell you to please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. That way, when other enlightening videos like this get out, you'll be the first to know. That's crazy. What am get? Eat by the wolves. I wonder. I wonder how. Like, I wonder if they left remains of. You know what I mean? Like, they eat him, but they was able to tell that that was him by like the blood stains on the snow. You know what I mean? Or maybe they just ate everything. Yeah, that's kind of dope. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that like button, subscribe, and drop a comment down below if you liked the video. My name is Art. Thank you for tuning in to AM on Advice. And remember, baby, the world is yours.